episode 79. We took last week off without an announcement because we're just weird like that. But it was at the beach for the fourth. Great time. Yeah, and dude. How like, many you know family what? beach trips do you have a year? I'm curious because I thought you missed the one when we were in Senegal. Yeah. So my dad's side of the family, so like my dad's mom, all of his siblings, and it's a four generations on both sides. So my dad's side and my mom's side both do a family beach week in the summer. Mm, nice. So, yeah, it's great. Um, you it's were, crazy though. Where were you at? Garden City? Garden City Beach. Nice, dude. That's a, that seemed like a patriotic place to be on the 4th. Yeah, it's great. You always watch the fireworks, the show at Merle's Inlet, although it kept getting pushed off. It was supposed to be 10.30, I think, or 10, then it was 10.30. It got pushed back to 11, and at 11, they said that a part was waiting or on its way, and it was going to take five minutes to fix. And I think they got them off at 11 15 or 11 30, maybe. Uh, that's kind of late for fireworks show. Yeah. yeah, I watched a little bit of it. I'm like, I'm going to bed. But at that point, it's like extra dark, so they pop a little more, which is kind of cool. That is true. Yeah, that is true. Took the drone up. I was trying to be brave and fly right above some fireworks, and I think I was high enough. I was like 90 something meters. So I think it would have been good, but I just got a little chicken, and so I backed out and got it from the side. Like, yeah, sometimes it's a little better to be a little more cautious with the drone rather than yeah, like... Yeah, who, who would have thought? Bit. You haven't heard it first on this pod. No. I've been practicing. Yeah? You, you're trying to get nice with it. Because one, I think we got some sick stuff. Finishing up the Mallorca vlog right now. I think it's one of my favorite things that we've done. So I'm pumped for it. Hopefully everyone checks it out. But I was like, the drone footage was sweet. But I, I've been practicing some skills and things. I'm like, if only we could go back next yeah, show. Yeah, dude. I know. I feel like we didn't know that much about it, especially because you got the pro and it has like some new features and stuff that we didn't know what to do with. So now we do. And we were both, you were gun shy with it. I just was figuring it out <laughs> right then and there. I so. was gun shy with it because it was your drone True. and I didn't want to wreck your drone. I might have done it with mine too. Who knows? Yeah. But yeah, Mallorca vlog is going to be sweet. I feel like Mallorca is so beautiful. Like, you can't really mess it up, knock on wood. It's beautiful. <laughs> Joe, you, it's so beautiful that you can't even ruin it, Joe. You can't even ruin it. So, I mean, I think it's going to be great. I'm pumped for it. I, for it. Yeah. That was one of the favorite places I think I've ever been. So, that's yeah. cool. Super pumped for that vlog coming out. How was your fourth, though? What'd you do? It was good. I went with Elaine to visit her family in Destin and hung out there for a few days. We kind of just hung out, had a little, um, like a little, I guess you call it barbecue. All right, barbecue. Is barbecue only when you're in the backyard making barbecue, or do you call it barbecue when you're out there cooking burgers? Mm, I mean, that's a region-based question. I generally say cookout, but I, I go a little bit barbecue at times. Yeah, I, I think I typically say cookout too, but I found myself about to say barbecue, but we were eat, really eating burgers. So I guess it was more of a cookout. Interesting. But some places Without actually do. cooking barbecue. Yeah, without. Yeah, no, that, that's definitely a region barbecue. thing. Yeah, just curious on your thoughts on that. But anyway, just kind of hung there, did that, and um, hung out in Destin for a few days. Glad we had good fourths. Sorry we didn't come with an episode. But we got a two-minute drill to make up for it right now. So I honestly thought this was already a done deal, but Wander Franco was formally charged after, I guess it's been like a little over a year since the allegations were surfaced and he left the team. Yeah, that's, but, that's bad stuff. That. The Rays caught a bad one on that one. That's that's not good. Not good. In other sad news, Hurricane Barrel um, unfortunately made landfall in Houston this Monday and has already killed four people and has left millions without power. And it also damaged the Texan stadium. So not great for the Houston area. In other news, Dan Don Hurley is signing a six-year, fifty million dollar extension with UConn, which is twenty million less than the six-year, seventy million offer he turned down from the Lakers. Glad he's staying at UConn though. He's killing it there. Or are we glad? Make way for the Gamecocks. That's all I'm saying. Yeah. But true. our our guy, Ellie De La Cruz, stole two more bases on Monday. So now he's up to 45 on the season, which is the most ever by a red before the All-Star break. And by far the most in the majors since, sadly, Acuna isn't there this year, which is a bummer. But other baseball news, Twins third baseman Jose Miranda became the fourth player in MLB history to get hits in 12 consecutive at-bats. That's hot. Moving on to women's basketball. In the WNBA, Angel Reese set a league record with her 13th consecutive double-double, while Caitlin Clark became the first rookie ever with a triple-double. That rivalry is interesting. I think they are definitely boosting it for ratings, but, you know, whatever. And in soccer, Mr. Madeira himself, a.k.a. Cristiano Ronaldo, says this will be his last 
European Championship. The Portugal Stars, the tournament's all-time leading scorer with 14 goals, but his soccer career is probably not over just yet because he did mention he is thinking about playing in the next World Cup. So just the Euro career just Euro. is over. Yeah. Which, speaking of European competition, after being snubbed for the 2023 Ryder Cup team, Keegan Bradley will be the captain of the 2025 squad that will compete against Europe at Bethpage Black in New York. Nice. So that's a little in case you missed it in sports. How often does the Ryder Cup happen? Every two years? Every two years, yeah. So I think in two years from now, it's in Ireland. And we passed through the little town that it was going to be in when we were there. And, um, Ooh, the, the 2027 one? I think. I think it's in... Ooh, that'd be sweet. It was a little town called Adair, if I remember correctly. But anyway, that'd be cool. Hmm. That is a fun fact. Yeah. Adair. I dare you uh, to check out Iceman. That was cheesy, but whatever. Anyway, Iceman sent a video last week. Went ahead and posted it on social. But since we didn't have an episode, we're going to be playing that clip now. What's up, everybody? This week's Unsug Hero goes out to Darby, Montana. Darby, Montana is a small town in rural Montana where they filmed a lot of this show, Yellowstone. Well, the fun part about this is that it has now attracted people from all over the world, including Real Madrid's manager, Carlo Ancelotti. Carlo has just finished his tour of the Dutton Ranch and even a small bar featured within the show, which is only even cooler by the fact that I'm pretty sure the town has about a thousand people and not a single one of them knows who he is. Enjoy your vacation, Carlo. The town of Darby, you're this week's Unsung Hero. Boom. I saw that that was posted on social media, and I was like, when? What episode when was this on? Because I don't remember that at all. I was really confused. Yeah, well, that's why. I, I should have given you a heads up. What a bad co-host. No, it's I okay. I was like, anyway. I hope that wasn't on an episode that I was on, and I just totally Zoned missed it. out of it. I was laughing with Trey about it, because one of my favorite comments I saw was on YouTube. Someone was like, uh, actually, I'm going to pull it up and read it because it's ridiculous. <laughs> uh, on that video? Comments. On that video. You should be a better father and attend to your kid rather than being a Yellowstone groupie. I heard the kid Oh, I'm the sorry. The, the kid is just playing around him. Right. <laughs> well, I didn't know that a dad needs to attend to every single word that a child makes because that's the society we live in today. <laughs> and then to be a Yellowstone groupie. I think that probably makes you a worse parent if you just attend to their every crying need because then they're just going to cry about everything. Exactly. Also not a parent. That's, but I, that's a medical provider's advice right there. You have two dogs. So, you know, pretty close to yeah. kids, just about. Ask how Copper and Penny are doing. They're just thriving right they're now. Thriving. So there you go. I was like, that's just ridiculous. I was laughing. I was like, oh, yeah. It was on the fourth, too. So I'd be like, happy forefathers day. Thanks for the engagement. <laughs> that is a, uh, man, that's a tough comment. Speaking of forefathers day, I found Penny on the side of the road. And so I still a great parent though. I call yeah. Well, that was I adopted her, but uh, I call myself her founding father because I found her. So that goes right with forefathers' day. So I didn't. I should have celebrated for myself. Yeah, you should have. One of the one of the founding. That's what fathers. America's all about. That's what America's about, right? That there. is what it's about, man. <laughs> That's America for you. I thought you were saying you lost Penny again after we were just no, talking no, about no, how no. you're such a great dog dad. No, no, that's that's how I got her initially. A great adoptive father. A founding that father, is, some would say. A founding father, yeah. yeah. That is heartwarming, by the way. I forgot about that story, to be honest with you. Yep, she was walking down the road, and I thought she was copper. And I was like, dude, copper, how'd you get out here? And then it wasn't What's copper. up with this beagle? Yeah. yeah. And she was like, all right. I, uh, yeah, that's pretty sweet. Yeah. Yellowstone, though. I think I told you I finally caught back up, like, uh, probably two, three months ago. Because I hadn't watched like much of the last season and a half. And I'm like, okay. Because I, I think this is going into the last season. They miss a lot. That's, I know. I'm like, when is the plot going to happen? Yeah. Because the character development, all that's always been good. It's just, there's no plot. Like, it, got, it got pretty uh, corny to me. Kind of maybe halfway through the second season, I think. And Well, that's why I dropped off. Well, there was one part where at the end of one of the seasons, every, it looked like everybody was going to die. And then uh -huh. not a single and then person. They come back and everything's fine. Not a single person even had like anything bad happen to him. I guess Beth a little bit, but 
still like not that she bad. Needed just some something to happen. Third degree burns or first degree. Yeah. I don't know. How she degrees. was fine, but it, it wasn't anything like affected their character or anything like you know like they could, she could still do everything she was trying to do on the show. She just became more vengeful. Oh wait, that's what she already was before. Yeah, like <laughs> how could you get worse? But yeah, it kind of it kind of fell off. I liked more when it was like they were doing cowboy stuff, you know. Yeah, I wonder if the I, is the sixes out yet? Because you know they were doing that spinoff, and he Taylor Sheridan bought that ranch, and then that's where Jimmy went in the show. Anyway, I don't know. I haven't, I haven't uh, looked for that one. It's kind of cool that that's where the you know Real Madrid manager went. Pretty neat. Yeah, it's also really really random that he would go out there. Yeah, that I'm sure nobody sense. knew who he was either, so he could probably just live like a normal person. Yeah, because nobody in I mean, I f- wherever that that was Wyoming, right? Or was it Montana? Uh, Montana, okay. I think. Darby, Montana. Wherever that is, like nobody out there watches soccer, I guarantee. You. Yeah. And it's a population of like a thousand people. So. Right. I mean, I feel like the reverse would be true. You know, there's probably plenty of US coaches that go to some small town in Europe. Oh, to just yeah. get away from everything. I'm sure. Like so. if you're a football player over here, you could probably go to maybe Europe and not really be as noticed for sure. Yeah. Well, what I got for us for today is. I'm just hyping up the Olympics. I'm super hyped for it. I feel like I've always loved the Olympics. Last, I was going to say last year, the 2021, I like got into some, but it wasn't as much. And this one, I'm full-fledged in. Well, 2021 so, was kind of like a little weird because it was straight right coming out of COVID and there was still some weird stuff going on with that. Right. So. And so it just feels like it's bad. Yeah. And so I, one, for anyone that's hype already on the Olympics, I think this will make you more hype. And two, for anyone who is not on board with the Olympic train, which I don't know because that's un-American, uh, this should do it for you. That's what I'm saying. Here. Heck yeah. Let's go. So first up, just talking about the 2024 Summer Games in Paris. It's 15 days until opening ceremony starts right now. That's two weeks in one day for anybody two that's Two weeks in one day because this is going to be Thursday when you're listening and then it starts on a Friday. The torch should be in Cote d'Or. I don't know how to say that because I don't speak French, but it's somewhere in France yep. right now. Most of the events are taking place in Paris and the surrounding cities, but how far do you think the farthest event away is in miles? We're doing miles, not kilometers. Heck yeah, we're doing miles yeah. because it was just July 4th. Let's go. What <laughs> a kilometer? I'm close to moving to the metric system, dude. It just makes so much more sense. <laughs> For some things, but I'm just so accustomed to miles now. Like it just needs to stay. Um, miles from Paris that this is happening. Yeah, I'm gonna say 700. Ooh, we're looking at close to 10,000. We got surfing oh, taking place in Chiapas. Dude, I was thinking about in France. Frank, good. Yep. Should should French that Polynesia one. instead, right? Should have guessed that one, which is kind of gonna be sweet because, I mean, they could have some surf spots in France, but like the Tokyo one was a little bit weirder. Like I love that they're just going to Chiapu, like surfing Tahiti. Dude, cool. Is that this is gonna make um, me sound really just disconnected from the rest of the world? Is that still that's not still controlled by France? Is it? I think French Polynesia still is. Is that where Tiapu is? Is that like in French Polynesia? Yeah. Yeah, it's still French. It's the island of Tahiti, French Polynesia. Huh. But good to know. I I was looking into surfing reef breaks, like because I've just never surfed the reef break and I want to, but they also kind of like sketch me out a little bit because so I was like just, you know, looking into to that wave, to look into jaws, you know, <laughs> all these like crazy ones. It's nuts. Dude, you thought the sea urchin was bad? Imagine landing on a reef getting shredded, and then stepping on a sea urchin and trying to get out off of the reef. It would be yeah, crazy. a live reef that's three feet max of water yeah, dude. with a massive wave just pounding down on you. I saw a drone yeah, video crazy. this morning, just totally unrelated to what we're... I mean, it's related to what we're talking about, but not because we're talking about this. I just saw it on my Instagram feed. It was somebody surfing that wave, and from the drone, you could clearly see the reef. Like You could see like... It was like well defined, but it's like a foot yeah. underwater. It's crazy. It's crazy. Like, that would just, the best advice is just don't fall. I'm like that's sketch. I have you ever seen a video of somebody like falling on it, like a 
first person video? Uh, I've seen some. I try to stay away from the gruesome ones because I need it. I got. I just gotta know what happens, dude. I don't know how you make it out of that without life threatening injuries. I think a lot of people probably do get some crazy injuries, but it, yeah, it's been a long time since someone's died in competition at one of those, though, which is nice. Yeah. But anyway, the medal for the Olympic Games. One is kind of cool. The Olympic and Paralympic medals are like pretty similar, which is pretty cool. But it's interesting. Have you seen anything about the medal release mm -hmm. that they came out with? No. Uh, so it's got a hexagon in the middle, which is from in the shape of the Eiffel Tower, which is also symbolic of the shape of France herself. But what's interesting is the hexagon in the middle of the medal is actually made from iron from the original Eiffel Tower. Eiffel Tower. So I guess... I mean, the Eiffel Towers had a number of renovations, and so they've restored and kept some of the iron from it, and then they're making it into this metal, which is sweet. So every single metal in the middle has this hexagon that's like inlaid into the metal. It looks, I mean, I'm not surprised because I feel like the French, you know, they're going to have something classy and sleek as a design, right, right. but it just looks sweet. And it's cool to say you have part of the Eiffel Tower. And you're No, that's real cool. That That's a nice touch. You've been to Paris, right? Mm -hmm. What did you think about the Eiffel Tower? Thoughts? Loved it at night a lot more. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, was it like lit, lit up? Yeah, when you first saw it, were you overwhelmed, underwhelmed, or like on par with what you thought it would be? I think I, it was on par with what I thought mm -hmm. because I feel like I could have. I don't know. If, it would be hard to be overwhelmed by it. I think. Okay. Yeah. Gotcha. I mean, given the fact it was built in like the 1880s, that makes it more impressive. But right now, I think it was really cool. And then we were like on the Seine with it lit up and that was really cool. But actually going to it, I mean, it's cool. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? It like, does I sound like it'd be cool at night. Like yeah. that would add a lot to the, you know, experience. But yeah, but they've like stripped the brown paint off of the iron. So it's just like the, the iron colored iron in the middle and so it looks sweet that's real cool. i'm probably not doing a good job of describing the metal so you should check it out because i think it's one of my favorites that i've seen in a while but moving on we're talking about what we really want to do that was a little nod to france now we're talking about the us of a at the summer games you have any idea what our medal count is at the summer games you mean like all time all time summer games which is of course first place uh I'm going to go like 568. 2,636 total medals, 1,065 golds, 834 silver, 737 bronze medals. Jeez. All right. I will say awesome. when I was thinking of that number, I was thinking of gold medals only. So, Ooh, even still, but still, it's double we're looking what at I like double that because USA. Going into this game, so we're going for our eighth consecutive time leading the summer medal count. And it would be our fourth consecutive time leading the gold medal count because we lost it in the 08 Beijing one. Ooh. And last year, or not last year, I keep saying last year, the 2020-2021 Olympics, we only won by one gold over China. So got to keep our eye on dude, that. We got to stomp China at this one. We got to assert our dominance dude. again. Like, Just let them know, like, hey, we are still here. You have way more people than us. We don't care. It doesn't matter. Looking for like 50 plus gold medals in these games, which would be sweet. Heck yeah. What's the, uh, you said the most ever in a one is 58? Most ever. In a single? Or did you say that? Oh, I didn't say that. Oh, I uh, made that up in my head. Made that up. Yep. I think I was just saying we should go for something like that. Gotcha. But we're, oh, I did say though, we're going for our eighth consecutive time leading medal count. And then this would be the fourth time leading our gold medal count. So. Got to keep that dominance in the summer games. Uh, other thing, obviously, I mean, I'll let you guess, but I, I just know you're going to get it right, so I'm not going to let you guess. The track and field, aka athletics and swimming, are the ones we have the most medals in. And 56.4% of all of our gold medals come from those two events or sports. Track, field, and swimming? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, I mean, those also have the most events in them, too. Oh, for sure. That makes sense. It makes sense. But yeah, we do but, dominate. I want to say dominate the track, but when we read all the the world records, we didn't own but like one of them. I think it was a long jump. So but you also said you avoided some that were straight. I did. I did avoid some. some, but let's see. 
Uh, we definitely and dominate swimming, though. Swimming yeah. is ours. And with uh, track and field, I feel like, I mean, we still dominate it on a scale. Like, we have the most medals, most gold, all that in yeah. it. And so, like, we're just consistently up there. Right. But it's an interesting segue because I wanted to look at a few of the team sports and then a few individual sports. Also, I feel like I'm not doing a good enough job of hyping up the Olympics right now. What do you mean? I'm hype. Just, I don't know. Just hype up America real quick. This is where the most national pride for me ever comes out. Yeah. Wait, you want me to hype up Sports America real quick? I, I just want to want to get hyped up about these Olympics right now. I just want to make sure that I'm selling it right. Yeah, we got we to gotta come up with a good way to sell this. Mm -hmm. Well, while you're thinking yeah, about yeah. that, how about you do that after the team sports? Because the team sports, this is going to get you hyped up. The five on five men's basketball is going for it. Five, Pete. It's a lot of fives right there. Yep. And Steph, LeBron, and Katie are going to play together for the first time ever because it's going to be Steph's first Olympic Games. So the roster, they haven't made any changes since they released it in April. They have contingencies, obviously, but it's Kawhi Leonard, Tyrese, Embiid, KD, LeBron, Steph, Anthony Edwards, Holiday, Jason Tatum, Booker. <laughs> like Kawhi, Kawhi dropped the, today, though. Oh, he did today. He dropped for like injuries. So we picked up uh, Derek White from Boston. So it's kind of a That's controversial pick. Wild. But it's also wild hmm. that Jalen Brown, who was the finals MVP, didn't make it from Boston. Is not on the team, but two other players from Boston are on the team. So it's crazy. Anyway, but our team is crazy but, good. Like it would be embarrassing if we lose. They have to fight people. We won't lose. There's no other option. No other we option. We won't lose there. There's always uh, like then, some uh, B-list NBA players that live in or like are from other countries though that go over there and just show out, which is crazy. So interested to see who that's going to be. Hopefully nobody. Hopefully we just. I mean, hopefully they show out and it's still like a third as much as we're showing out. No, I don't want anybody to show be. out. I want us to just take it to them, take it to everybody. Well, no, they can show out against other countries. Right, that? that's fair. We're like, oh, this guy's going off. And then they plays the US of A. Boom. They can go off against China. Zero points. Against zero China. rebound. Zero assist. <laughs> yeah, just shut them down. That's what we need. That would be sick. I'm a little uh, concerned, though, because a lot of our guys are older. We do have an older crowd, like KD, LeBron, Steph, was Kawhi, but now he's off. AD, they're all old. -er. They're still dominant players, but that is a little bit concerning. That is true. But then LeBron, I mean, dude, he's ridiculous. He's ridiculous. At, but his team, like he's not even, he's not leading his team very far in the playoffs as is. He's still really good. He can turn it up. I think when he has other good players around him, they're gonna, he's going to be good. But it does worry me a little bit than being a little bit older. That's true. But on the positive side, the Olympic um, three-point arc is, I think, two feet closer in than the NBA three-point arc. So he's, and we've never seen Steph play on a shorter three-point arc like that. He's going to be unstoppable. Anywhere on the court, he's just going to be draining. Him. Yeah, and then he's going to get to go even closer. Like, come on. Yeah. Come on. Come on. Yeah. I think it's just going to be fun to see. That. They are getting older, but it's going to be fun to see the three of them together. Yeah. Then the women's gymnastics team, I'm pretty pumped about because like Simone Biles is back on it. It's apparently one of the oldest ones because... I feel like it's rare to even have people in their 20s yeah. still on it because it's just like such a young sport. Um, but I think their eye on redemption, they, you know, they got dethroned by the Russians in the last game. So Tough. I'm pumped to watch them. And then women's soccer, Alex Morgan's not on the team, which is going to be interesting. But they have four gold medals, which is the most in any games, but they haven't won gold since the 2012 London Games. So... It's time. They got to bounce back because last Olympics and last World Cup, they got bounced kind of earlier. So, want to see some good things. I kind of don't hate that they're like bringing in the younger generation right now, though, with that because Alex Morgan's been there for quite a while. I, I haven't been paying attention, though, to know whether she's still killing. I think she's still doing pretty well and um, yeah, whatever the women's league know. is. But interesting to see like what the younger generation will do now. But those are the three teams I'm kind of eyeing going into this. It's like the basketball, you have to just dominate. It's not even enough to win gold. Just dominate. Yep. And then women's gymnastics and women's soccer, can they get back on top of the podium? Would be sweet. I think gymnastics does. I think they do. I think Simone Biles has just like a crazy comeback this year. She looked sharp so. in the – we watched the uh, 
some of the qualifying for women's mm-hmm. gymnastic and she looked she looked like she's doing really well. So Dude, we'll that's see. sweet. That's sweet. You got any hype up for America before we move on to inv- individual sports? I think you've done a good job coming in, but oh, here we go, man. America oh, let's go. Let's go. Most gold medals of all time, most medals of all time. Back to back world war champs. Come on, man. Bring it. We want all the smoke from the rest of the world. It's time to show people that we're not a joke. I know it's looked like we're a joke as of late with recent things, recent, um, how do you say, like debates maybe that have been aired on TV. Might, <laughs> might look like we're a joke, but we're here. We're not messing around. We're showing the world we're still in charge. Come on. 2024. Because here's Olympics. the thing we're going for At it. At the end of the day, you can talk about political conversations, world events, current affairs, all that stuff. But you know what really matters? Sports. You know, what you know who's really, going to dominate in that? You know what really gets Us. me hyped up? <laughs> American muscle. Bring it. You don't want to mess with us. Come on. We're taking Come the goal. Come on. In everything. Boom. Except probably in weightlifting right, individuals. because Eastern Europeans always win weightlifting, but whatever. Yeah, but we should take that over now, too. We need to. We really need yeah, to. we need to. As long as it's not China. Can't be having that. Oh, yeah. That would be, no, yeah, yeah, can't have that. So, individual sports. I got eight athletes that I got my eyes on. Both of them. That I'm, I'm just pumped to see. First up, these are some some old, when I say old ones, may, I mean a little bit old, but more like are uh, people that are some obvious choices and then some other ones I've been reading up on I'm getting pumped about. So, first up, we got Hannah Roberts. And the BMX freestyle. Ooh. So she has five world titles under her belt, but doesn't have an Olympic gold yet. So time to do it. One, got time to do it because what we're saying, come on, US of A. And then she's also, so she's going in as the favorite with it. And she finished second in Tokyo, got to move it up to first in gold. First in gold, gold is first, first here in Paris. Uh, and she was the first woman to land a 360 tail whip in competition. It's a little fun fact about her. That's a sick trick. Sick trick. Anyway, BMX, first up. Next up, Simone Biles. We were just talking about her. She's 27, but could become the most decorated American gymnast in Olympic history with one more medal. We would bring her to, I think, a medal count of 12 at this year's events. Uh, She looks dialed in. She looks focused. She looks on her A game. I think she does it. I think she does it. She's ready. She's... I think after last Olympics, she just locked in, ready to roll. She's going to do it. Yeah, I think so too. Then, uh, okay, next up, Sam Watson. We got an 18-year-old coming in now in sport climbing. He broke the speed climbing world record twice at a World Cup event in April. Uh, So he's 18, has already broken the world record twice. He's a gold medal contender going into Paris. Let's go. That's a crazy event. Let's get up that crazy do you know much about that? It's one? insane how fast they do it. What's that? Do you know much about that one? Sport climbing? The event. Just like, I don't know much about it. Just every time I watch them, like, it's just weird looking at. It's crazy. It's like I was, they're sprinting up a wall. Yeah. What I've always wondered is are the handholds and stuff at the same exact mm. spot every time or do they switch it up and you just have to like I feel, freestyle it? Uh, I've assumed because they go so fast that it's the same ones, but I mean, they could just be it's that kind of wild. You know what I mean? Too, but. I mean, I don't know. You never know. Yeah, you don't. That's it's insane either way. They they're moving so quick. Yeah. Um, okay. So I I'm kind of I didn't mean it like this, but it was going new person, old returner, seeing how it's doing. Uh, new person back to a returning guy. We've got Caleb Dressel right now swimming. I'm curious to see cuz he won 5 golds in Tokyo, then in 2022 he took took some time away from swimming. Seems like he's back, energized. He looked good in the um, at the qualifiers, and so I don't know. I'm just like curious to see how dominant, how good he'll be going into this games. So. Yeah, that that's awesome. I didn't even know he was back into swimming, so I'm pumped that he's going to be there. He's a beast. yeah. In the the Ice Man a couple weeks ago with the young guys, um, the one who set the 18 u butterfly, he was the one who finished second behind Caleb. Uh, so that was kind of fun young watching. Guns, the same let's go. Heat. Young guns. Okay, sticking with swimming though, Katie Ledecky, obviously, because she already has six individual gold medals, which is making, which, let's see, 
six individual gold medals, which is more than any female swimmer in Olympic history, and then has 10 total medals, which includes seven golds. She'll be going for a 4 P in the 800. I think she dropped out of the 200, but has like a few more events to go for. Can can she hit like nine, 10 total uh, gold medals yeah. after these games? I didn't even realize that she was still around for swimming either. Jeez. I think she's... I think she's also 27. I might be just oh, confusing her. Oh, she's way younger than I thought. But it is her fourth straight games because she was so young in the first I guess one. that's what I was no, thinking. No, no, that wouldn't be right. Well, maybe maybe she's 29. Let's see. I've got to oh, look She's been there. around for a while. I just assumed she was older because of that. But... Oh, no, she is 27. She is 27. And it's her fourth straight games? Would be... F- she would I guess, been... okay, it, that wouldn't be 16 years, though. It's 13 years. So it'd be, I think she was 14, 15, something like that at her first one. Yeah. Jeez. That's impressive. Yeah. That is impressive. Cause I was doing the math. I was like four times four, 16. I was like, oh, wait, yeah, no, right. It'd be 12. That's not right. right. But yeah. And then <clears throat> I guess the 13th would be the next year. But anyway, next up surfing, Chiapu. Carissa Moore, this, uh, she said that this is going to be her last event before she steps away from competition. So she is reigning Olympic gold medalist and then a five-time world champion. So let's go. I'm interested to see the surfing this year. That's going to be, it just doesn't feel like an Olympic sport, but also skateboarding doesn't. So I'm sure it'll, I'm sure it'll mess. Yeah. You did well. you watch any in Tokyo? Of the surfing? Of the surfing? Yeah. Did they have it then? Yeah, they. Yeah. Uh, this is the I think second one they've okay, had it. I didn't even realize I had it in Tokyo. Did you watch uh, it? It was in, yeah, I watched it. It was you could tell it got like low production broadcast, but yeah. it was still fun. Yeah, it's cool uh, to have it in there. Yeah, for sure. Because they, they took baseball, softball, and something else out though. But anyway, um, two more. We've got. Ryan Krauser, I think, track and field. In Paris, he will attempt to become the first three-time Olympic champion in shot put history. Shot put history. So, throw a little love to the shot putters. Let's go putting that and shot. then one of the ones that, ooh. And then the one I think I'm most excited about, though, is Noah Lyles. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. He could become the first man since you Usain to win gold in the 100 meter 200 meter and the four by 100 meter relay um because he did that at wait sorry he did do that at the 2023 world athletic championships so now there's high hopes it'll do it at the olympics we need him to show out we need to take back the fastest man in the world we have to do it it's got to be you noah go get it because what's uh usain's 100 meter his world record time it's it's nine five seven i think but yeah i don't even i mean that'd be sweet if you broke that that's a pretty that's a tough record to be i just want him to win just just go out there and but win what if he had a nine five four i mean what if you ran a nine five three hey come on what if you ran an eight flat <laughs> well he would definitely be drug tested and they would have to do studies on and he would fail <laughs> yeah, yeah but no, I just want him to go win, win the 100, win the 200, and bring us back to 4x100. That would be amazing. Dude, he's also just seems like a seems like a cool, like quirky guy. Like, have you seen him bring the Yu-Gi-Oh cards out? Mm-hmm. Yeah. He's got that quirk, the good quirk. Yeah, it kind of reminds me of uh, uh, running back for the Saints. Um, Alvin Kamara? Nope. Back Kamara? Up. Is it Jamal Williams? Jamal something? Oh, I think it is Jamal. Anyway, it's, it is Jamal Williams. Yeah, the name didn't oh, you sound right. To say but it again. Been out of football season for too long. Ready for that to come back? And if yeah. that was in the Olympics, you already know what's happening there. Well, did you see we lost in American football? Yeah, dude, that's like our JV team. Like nobody of note is playing on that team. I don't think. But still, it's called American football. Our C squad should be able to beat anyone's A squad. Maybe. I mean, yeah, I agree it sucks, but if we really like suited up and played against other countries, it wouldn't it wouldn't be close. So that's true. I'm I mean, playing I'm i I'm really gonna not show that any attention because we it's not it wouldn't be close. Should we hit the draft now? Let's draft them. So what are we drafting today, Joe? 
We are drafting favorite Olympic sports to watch. We were going to go events, but we realized there's so many of them. We could, you know, live in track and field. So maybe we'll do as a draft next week. But sports. So are we separating track and field or just doing athletics as one? Mm. We'll just do athletics. That's the way they categorize yeah. okay. okay. it. Yep. Yeah. Yeah, they're kind of uh, intertwined a little bit in some of them too. So, And speaking of that, with the first overall pick in the Olympics draft, I will take track and field as the event or the sport. Ooh, track and field is solid, just electric. You know, 100, 200, you got the long races, you got the throws. My favorite, the decathlon, just got a little mm-hmm. bit of everything in that. So go track and field. That's fair. That's fair. I'm going. Ooh, this is just going to be the what I'm most excited for looking into it. So one, give me swimming. It's yep. always been fun. And the U.S. dominates, which is fun. And then two, I'm going gymnastics. Mostly because when you watch gymnastics, that's like the one sport that I can't even fathom doing. You know, like I can pretend yeah. like I can do the other ones to some degree. But just watching gymnastics, I'm just like, humans are insane. <laughs> gymnastics doesn't make any sense at all. Yeah, I agree. It's just, it is insane to watch. And the dudes, two weekends ago, we were chilling, watching, we were just watching men's gymnastics qualifiers. They're some mm-hmm. of the most shredded people you ever see. Their biceps are bigger than your head. It's crazy. Yeah. Might need to take up gymnastics. Yeah, might need to. All right, my second pick of the draft is going to be basketball. Because basketball is yep. awesome. The U.S. runs basketball. Honestly, it's not that much fun to watch because we're just crushing everybody. But at the same time, that makes it really fun to watch. So it's not, it's not fun in like a competitive way, but like in a we're just better than you way, it's great. Mm-hmm. And my third pick, I'm going to go with... I'll go with beach volleyball. I love watching beach volleyball. It's a good one. Very summery that, sport too, like in the middle of the summer, watching beach volleyball is fun. Those are some some good options right there. I was I would have had both of those, I think, next up on my list. So good picks. Number three for me. I don't know if it's gonna be high on a lot of people's list, but I love watching it. And I've always said, and not that I ever think I could, but it's like if I was five years old and training to be an Olympic sport, which one do I think that I have the best shot? of being in, I think that it would be this one. And that is I gotta guess. water polo. Oh, that's not what I thought, but that is fun to watch. Well, that's a lot of fun to watch. It's fun to watch. I feel like for me, it's such a perfect blend because it blends like the swimming stuff mm-hmm. with like throwing and all the things that I've loved. So it's fun. I enjoy watching. That'd be a fun one. Which one do you think it was going to be? Um, Just the way you set it up, I really thought it was me badminton. <laughs> I really thought you were just setting it up to say badminton. Really? Really thought it was going to be badminton. Yep. I like that. Okay, this one, I'm curious. There's a few different directions I could go with it. But I've always loved, and I tell me if this falls under gymnastics because I'm not smart enough to know, but trampoline has always been really fun to watch for me. Is that under gymnastics? Everything I've seen listed, it's not. So I think no. I think, okay. I mean, I would have probably put it under gymnastics before, but the list I was looking at, it's separate. I looked at a couple of different lists, so. Let's see. Dude, that's so hard. There's so many that I just feel like sit at the same tier right now for me. Gotta hit one. All right. I'm going to go ahead, Dean. Stick it with the water. I'm pumped about it. Give me surfing with pick four. Yep. It's, I know it's, it's not going to be a crowd pleaser, but I like it, so. It is a cool is. thing to have, like, intertwined into the Olympics, although it's not like a Typical Olympic sport. It's pretty sweet. Yeah. It's cool. So I got two more. With my number four, I'm also going to pick something that growing up I thought I could be good at. Um, mm-hmm. And it's rugby sevens. Ooh, yeah. So I don't even I don't even really know if like the best players in the world play in the Olympics. Kind of like, I'm not, I'm not really sure. But I haven't watched it too much in the past. But it seems like um, just a fun event to have there. Like a true... Just like power, speed, you're hitting people. That belongs in the Olympics. So since they don't have football yet, we're going rugby. Pick number five. It is tough to call at the moment, but I think I'm going to have to go with handball. Mm. Have you ever played handball? Yeah, I love handball. It's so much fun. I used to love it as a kid. It's fun to watch, too. They just have that. Water polo is just like water handball. Right, and that's kind of why I thought about it, but... 
Um, handball is just so much fun to, to play, and it's it can be fun to watch. So, got to go handball. I like that. I like that. Okay, I'm torn. Last one. Archery is fun. Trampolines really high on my list. They just it launch up. Weightlifting is pretty fun. I think I really wanted. Oh man, beach beach volleyball is so much better. But I think I'm going to take regular volleyball. That's cool too. Or triathlon. I I. Yeah, I've got to have a volleyball on my list. So I'm going to go volleyball. With the caveat, beach is above it. Right. But regular volleyball. It's just the, like 2v2 two, two two just feels really fun to me. Yeah, and I feel like you got to pick volleyball, like a team sport over something like triathlon. Triathlon is hard to watch. Like yeah. It's super cool, but it's just a long race. And yeah. I don't know, like a team sport is a lot more fun to watch, I think. Right. So. That's why I was thinking I was closer to like archery and trampoline for it, but... I mean, there's. I love the Olympics. I love all of them. But yeah, so much the fun. The things I don't care about in the all. winter, I'm watching curling. Yeah. Yeah, it's crazy. But anyway, pump for the Olympics. 72, 79, not 72. 79 is in the books. Hopefully, we win 79 golds at this Olympics. Are there even 79? I don't know. We're, gonna We're win winning them, them all. We're taking them home. We're winning them all. Take USA, them home. baby.